All our holidays were always such a mess. Oh, yeah. How did you get through it? I had a lot of help from Jack Daniels. Hey, welcome back, Musicians Movie Club. Welcome, cl- Clubbers. I don't know what they're called. Clubbers. Can you think of my name? Uh, clubists. Clubists? <laughs> it sounds like you're anti-club. Uh, well, it's like a cyclist, you know, like... Aren't they anti-cycle? No, they're, uh, they are, they are, uh, pro-cycle. They're... But they do it, but, like, they secretly hate it. <laughs> These are, um... Self-loathing bicycle riders? Yeah. Okay. You I know, guess our, our podcast listeners are probably also self-loathing to some extent, so maybe that hmm, works. Yeah, so welcome back, clubists. It happens a lot that I, if I talk about my bike or that I've biked somewhere, sometimes with a stranger, they'll be like, oh, you a cyclist? And I'm like, no, let's not get it. Let's, <laughs> let's, not, <laughs> no. let's not go there. <laughs> like, I, people who, who ride bikes very seriously are very into it. Yeah, I'm trying to... Th- I feel like I know a handful of people who are serious cyclists, but they kind of scare me. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to Comedy Month on the podcast. <laughs> Comedy Month is all year long. All year long. Um, and today is our holiday spectacular, and we're going to talk about a movie from 1989 entitled National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Hell yeah. Um, before we get into that... To accompany our holiday special, we we made eggnog. Made, made is a generous word. <laughs> I guess like, we made something from other pieces, but... We uh, didn't do enough research to realize that it involves cooking. Eggnog is hard, y'all. Yeah. Um, so Dan just Googled easy eggnog recipe. <laughs> and we just kind of put a bunch of shit into a pot. And mixed it up, and now we're drinking it. Yeah, and you can you can really feel the egg texture. <laughs> <laughs> but we used two percent milk, some heavy cream, um, vanilla imi- egg. imitation vanilla Extract, eggs, yeah. yeah, and sugar, cinnamon, and some Rittenhouse rye. Yeah. So yeah, we're drinking some eggnog like they do in the film Christmas Vacation from nineteen eighty nine, which is. My favorite Christmas movie. Hell yeah. And also just one of my favorite movies for a lot of reasons that we'll get to. But Christmas movies as a genre, not my favorite. It's not my thing either. Yeah. I like most of my favorite Christmas movies are movies that I guess more sane people would call Christmas adjacent. I'm thinking Your Eyes Wide Shut. I'm thinking Your (laughs) Fat Man Returns. I'm thinking... Those are actually the only two I can think of that um, I like that are Christmas movies. <laughs> Funny enough, we we had a long-ish debate on what movie we should talk about, because we also yeah. considered Eyes Wide Shut. <laughs> we did, which I want to do in the future, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I that one's a Christmas movie for sure. Like, of all yeah. the quote-unquote Christmas movies, like, that's a Christmas yeah. movie. There was a, a Hard Times article that was like, Move, Christmas movies ranked by how cool you are to claim that they're a Christmas movie. It was like <laughs> number thirty, Die Hard. You know, like yeah, um, yeah. Eyes Wide. I actually I rewatched Eyes Wide Shut as well. Um, and uh, my main thing about that movie is that it is clunky. I like. Yeah. I think it's amazing, but it's also like it's really bizarrely paced. Yes, and like there are scenes that I'm like this is. The master at work. It's the goat. He's back. Kubrick. Like, um, obviously the center, centerpiece scene yeah. at the mansion. But, yeah. um, but like, when he goes to rent that suit at that guy's weird... Yeah, the rainbow whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then he goes in there, and then there's those two older men with yeah. the young girl. And, like, that, I don't, that scene's ridiculous like i think it's awesome uh, but then there's a lot of scenes where i'm just like this is strange what's, what's going on dream logic you can call anything that and do whatever you want yeah well i don't know i'm i'm it's it's so weird that i'm i'm more inspired by the 
theory that he wasn't done editing it or something. Yeah, I remember... We were talking about Eyes Wide Shut. No, we said we were going to talk about a different movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I remember I worked uh, my college's orientation program, and I was talking to, like, one of the new freshmen, and somehow we got on the topic of Kubrick and got into, like, not a, de- not a debate, but, like, a little bit over whether or not Eyes Wide Shut counted as a Kubrick movie, because she was full on, like, oh, it wasn't done when he died, so, like, it's not, it doesn't count. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? I feel like the conspiracy theories for... Eyes Wide Shut are more fun than The Shining. <laughs> They're pretty fun. Yeah. Well, it's just one big conspiracy theory for Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah. Which is that, you know, he was, like, murdered. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that which is the do, main one. Yeah. Do you have a different one in mind? Uh, m- mostly the tame things about how he didn't finish it. But Oh, okay. Well, because there were people <laughs> who say that he didn't finish it. Or, like, you know, I was actually reading the whole Wikipedia uh, section about this, which is that, like, he had several conversations with different people about if um if like he liked the movie huh so there's like there's like arlie ermy who plays the drill sergeant yeah. in full metal jacket said that he had a phone call with kubrick where he's like it sucks i'm this is a terrible movie and then tom cruise was like very adamant he's like no he said this was his greatest contribution to cinema wow and, and <laughs> the funny thing is i take that as you just feel differently about things you make from yeah. week to week <laughs> there, there are days i love the stuff I'm working on. There are days I hate the stuff I'm working on, but I always put it out and it's always fine. (laughs) (laughs) It's always fine. It's always fine. Um, but yeah. And you know, Kubrick made a lot of good movies. There were some good movies that came out in 2023. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to start about, uh, our Favorite and maybe least favorite films of 2023. Do you have a list for that? Or do you have like an um, idea of that? So I ranked everything I saw that was new that came out this year. Me too. And I'm excited about this because I know one of my top three is your least favorite of the year. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I can, I'll do favorites. I want to, I, I want to focus on the positive. And I, I want to preface this too by saying there are like three or four movies I haven't seen yet that just came out that I, I'm pretty confident will make this list. Yeah. So shout out to movies I haven't seen, such as Poor Things, yep. The Zone of Interest, Iron Claw, and Loki Pump for Wonka. Not gonna lie. Paul King, if you're listening, I love you. Um, I'm excited for Wonka, and I'm glad that it's it, it exists and supposedly doesn't suck. Hashtag pumped for Wonka. Hashtag pumped for Wonka. Remember hashtags? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> anyway, Twitter's dead, but cinema isn't quite yet. Um, yeah, we got a good, like, three years left. Yeah. Yeah. Number 10 is a little movie called Bottoms, directed by Emma Seligman. Uh, did you see Bottoms? Yes. It was a wild, violent ride that I didn't quite understand what was happening by the very end of it, but I had so much fun watching that's how I feel about it. There are a lot of movies this year that made my list that I'm like, I don't know what happened, but I had a good time. Yeah. I, I thought the movie was really funny. I yeah. thought it was cool that it was like so absurd. Yeah. For And to have the budget that it had and like you yeah. know, the, the uh, prestige that it did, you know, right. to be so goofy. Yeah. And like A.O. Beery is one of my favorite people ever, it turns out. So I'm just excited <laughs> that she's been in a bunch of stuff lately. That's all been good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, number nine, we got... Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, yeah. We saw together. Yeah, we did see that together. Um, yeah, I don't have much to say about that one apart from Patrick Dempsey, like, really surprised me. I did yeah. not think I liked him as much as I did, and I thought he was really fun in this movie. He's just a guy, you know? Like, he's just a he's guy. Just... Well, he's also the sexiest man alive, supposedly. Oh, so he's not just a guy. Right. Not all of us can claim that. But he was only the sexiest, sexiest man alive. Isn't that like an annual honor? Yeah, but he, he was it this year. Oh, this year? Yeah, this oh, year. Oh, I'm shit. Sure that, let me, let me I thought you were referencing, that. like, People Magazine 2006 or something. Well, he like, also was then. Yeah. But then I think, his, you know, out. his huge career resurgence with Thanksgiving, obviously. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> I don't know. Thanksgiving was... My, my 8 and, or 9 and 10 are, like, two of the most violent movies I've seen in a while, so I'm glad they were both good. I don't know. I didn't plan this. Number 8. <laughs> Oppenheimer. Um, I thought I was going to hate that movie. Me too. I straight up was like, oh, three hours of people talking about ethics. That sounds really boring. And I'm saying that as somebody who studied philosophy for four years. Yeah. I was just like, I don't want to hear Christopher Nolan dialogue for three hours. And it was so engaging in a way that I just did not expect. Like, it, it, it flew by. And honestly, there were moments of it where I was like, 
they could have let it breathe even a little bit more because they're going so fast through his life toward the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah. Michael Garrity's listening to this fuming that we <laughs> thought we might not like Christopher Nolan. Uh, I, yeah, he's, he's hit or miss for me, but Oppenheimer overall, I think is one of his better movies and I liked it a lot. Uh, number seven, Matt Johnson's Blackberry. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Did you see it? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what started my Matt Johnson fascination. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Again, I, I, I thought it was just super fun. Like, yeah. I Glenn Howerton, I already love from It's Always Sunny, which is like in my top three shows ever. And I'm just glad that people are starting to realize he actually can act. Well, he didn't really do anything else, like in a serious vein. You right. know, like he did what? AP Bio and... AP Bio. And I think he was in The Strangers. He was. I got Letterboxd <laughs> pulled up. In a bit part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I hadn't seen him do anything dramatic, but even just Dennis's character, like, seems genuinely hard to play well, so I always believed in him, and I'm glad that he pulled something off pretty wild in Blackberry. He's a five-star man. Five-star man. Yeah. Golden God. Uh, number six, Dream Scenario. Oh, yeah, I really want, see, that's on my list of things that will probably be, I will yeah. enjoy. Dream Scenario is like the first two thirds were some of my favorite movieing of the whole year. The ending kind of lost me, and I won't spoil anything for you where what the turn it takes. But like, the the, the beginning was strong enough that I was like so on board for most of it. That I was like, yeah. okay, I can. Overall, I'm like net positive. I, I googled it yesterday to see when it might be coming out on streaming so mm -hmm. I can watch it, and there was a news headline that just said A24 sniffs its own farts in Dream Scenario, and I'm <laughs> like. A24 has been sniffing their own farts, and I have this <laughs> instinct that this is not the one where they suddenly started doing that. I mean, if anything, it was Bo is Afraid, which is a movie I like that we'll get to, but, like, that is a <laughs> sniff your own fart movie, and I'll elaborate in a sec. Um, number five. Uh, where am I? Sofia Coppola's Priscilla. Do you, think, I, do you think I will like that movie? I don't know. It's oh. So my big thing with it, and I don't know if you'll feel the same way if you watch it, not having Elvis's music felt like a genuine miss to me. Ooh. Because it doesn't have any of his music, and there was kind of a disconnect for me between, like, Elvis, like, the icon, and then the character in the movie, because they never bridged that gap by, like, showing what he's doing. Yeah. Like, there's, like, one montage of him on stage, and, like, but it's not set to his music. And I thought that was really strange. But, like, Kaylee, I don't want to say her last name, Spanny? Spanny? The actress who plays Priscilla, mm. like, fucking phenomenal. And Jacob Elordi fucking phenomenal was Elvis. I never saw the Austin Butler one, but... that I, um, I feel like I have to watch Austin Butler Elvis first. Yeah. And this is the sequel. <laughs> but I, surely it must be like an intentional thing to, to, to literally separate art from the artist here. To mm -hmm. give you like the like, okay, I know you love Elvis, but like this is a movie that kind of paints him in a bad light, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Is. So yeah. it's like, they're probably doing that on purpose to kind of... I just assume the estate didn't want them to have the music because it was kind of painting him in a negative light. Yeah, that's probably true also, but <laughs> <clears throat> if I was Sofia Coppola, I would just be talking about that first part. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know. I It, it kind of carried a little bit of a disconnect for me, but overall, like, the performances were so strong, mm -hmm. um, and, like, the movie was so heartbreaking. I really enjoyed it. There you go. Yeah. So that was number five. Number four, Godzilla Minus One. Fun. Yeah. I, a lot of these I just had a good time. I don't have, like, really strong reasons for liking them, but... I also really... I didn't even know that, like, that came so fast. Like, I had no idea There was, idea like, was no a, marketing for yeah. it. I, my, a co-worker told me he was going to see it, and I was like, oh, I didn't know that was out. And it happened to be playing at um, Regal somewhere nearby, so I yeah. just kind of went that night, last minute, and, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, the human story was just as interesting as the monster destroying thing story is the thing everyone's been saying about it, but... Did you see the previous one, Shin Godzilla? No, I want to. Yeah, go watch I that. Too. Directed by Hideaki Anno, creator of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Hell yeah. 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 And it's I like Evangelion, but if it was a Godzilla. Great. So it's awesome. Great. Yeah. I can get on board with that. Uh, number three is my controversial pick. Ari Aster's Bo is Afraid. Oh, weird. I... <laughs> <laughs> um, so here, here's my here's my thing. I don't even know what my thing is. It's a, I, I don't have a good defense of this movie. Like, I know it's not amazing. It's really weird. It's disjointed. It's over-expository. It makes no sense. But, like, he took such big swings that I can't help but, like, find it endearing for that reason in a weird way. <laughs> I think this man needs 
serious therapy. Like yeah. we like we like we need to get this man off the camera and into a <laughs> onto a couch. The movie is the therapy. <laughs> I don't know. I just like I love Ari Aster. Like Hereditary, I like a lot. Midsummer is one of my favorite movies. Period. I love yeah. Midsummer. I'll go to bat for Midsummer. Yeah, Midsummer <laughs> is like one of my favorite horror movies of all time. But like, I love Joaquin Phoenix. I love Richard Kind, who is cool. He was in it. Nathan Lane. Um, I'm blanking on other people that were in it that were really good. Parker Posey. Parker Posey. Hell yeah, yeah. I love Parker Posey. Patty Lapone. Mm-hmm. That was a crazy casting. I don't know why that was a thing, but hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I saw it. I saw it in IMAX opening weekend, which was just wild. Being in an IMAX theater for three hours watching that, and I like immediately it was sold, and I yeah. I couldn't articulate well why I was sold on it so much as I think just being an anxious person, I identified with a lot of what he was trying to get at exploring the anxiety piece of it. Um, cause that's something I've always tried to explore in a lot of my work. So, granted, I don't think it was the most effective version of doing that, but it was just such a weird Gonzo attempt that yeah, I just I can't help but respect it a little bit. That's all totally correct. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> glad you feel that way. Uh, so I should explain that um, this is a joke from my previous podcast, which is that calling it Midsummer instead of Midsummer, because I the A24 had the A24 podcast, maybe they still do, but mm-hmm. um, there was an episode with Robert Eggers and Ari Aster. Mm-hmm. And I infamously have beef with Robert Eggers, which maybe oh. we'll talk about one day. But, okay. um, but, uh, and Eggers keeps calling it Midsommar. And I'm like, like I don't know if that's correct, but then the director is not correcting you, but maybe he's too anxious to correct you. And so now I'm kind of like, I'm just going to call it Midsommar for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, I don't know. And yeah, that movie's great. So yeah, it's more so good. Yeah. So, and so is Bo's Afraid, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Dan, we'll get to your least favorites, maybe, and you can <laughs> and yell yell about it. I was afraid. <laughs> uh, number two is a movie I don't feel like enough people saw, but I also would never recommend to anybody. Brandon Cronenberg's Infinity <laughs> Pool, <laughs> um, which I thought was awesome. One of the most fucked up movies I've seen ever, and that's having also seen Bo is Afraid this year. Yeah. Um, but, like, I think Mia Goth is one of my favorite actors right now. I loved Pearl. Pearl's one of my favorite horror movies. Um, Pearl was my favorite movie last year. Yeah, Pearl was fantastic. Yeah. That was in my top like three, I think, last year. Um, yeah, she knocks it out of the park. Uh, Alexander Skarsgård knocks it out of the park. I think their dynamic is so interesting and fucked up and fun. There were a couple weird choices. Like, mainly the sex scene, like the psychedelic sex scene is like the one yeah. thing where I'm kind of like, that didn't seem consistent or necessary but like the rest of it is just so tight and tense in a way that i just really appreciated and then number one was wes anderson's asteroid city which is a movie that i adore Mm -hmm. um any sci-fi movie that makes me feel existentially small (laughs) i'm usually into and i never expected that to be wes anderson you know wes is pretty good at movies he's pretty good at movies yeah uh, I love that Variety said Asteroid City was one of the, I think, top two worst movies of the year. I don't know if you saw oh, really? that. Oh, really? They had their they do their worst movies of the year list, which is stupid, but they, yeah, Asteroid City, I think, was number two after, like, uh, some Netflix original, which bummed that, me out. I feel like, A, that's probably a Rolling Stone-esque attempt to get clicks, but yeah. also, I can see how, because, spoiler alert, this movie's also in my top ten, but I can see how... Someone who had a real chip on their shoulder about Wes Anderson would particularly dislike this one. Yes, that is fair. And I, I almost felt that way about French Dispatch. Almost. Mm. Because I was like, I, Wes Anderson is like one of my favorite filmmakers, definitely, and was a huge part of me like breaking in my love of, of movies. and like, Same, yeah. <clears throat> kind of like, it's like we talked about um, with Tarantino and Kubrick and all of them as, as like a... a, a a gateway yeah. drug. <laughs> Somebody whose style is so obvious, like you can pick up on it and be like, oh, this is what authorship looks like. Yeah. He, now that's a man who movies a movie. Yeah. Um, and since then, like enjoyed all of his movies and Grand Budapest Hotel masterpiece, like Great eternally. Movie. Yeah. And then it's like, but since then I feel like maybe it become a little like, do something new. Yeah, I don't know. So I kind of could see maybe the perspective of somebody feeling that way because 
I've seen reviews of Asteroid City that were like, someone is informed that their mother is dead, and it's delivered in a flat voice, uh, and then there's like everything, like the whole movie is in one mon- monotonous kind of like yeah. speaking tone, mm-hmm. and I think I could see how somebody is like, wow, but I think it's also like his best magic trick is the way that he can shield so many emotions yeah. in in masks, you know, so... All I'm saying is I can I can understand the perspective. I don't agree with it, but I can yeah. understand it. <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting, though, to like, do something different mindset, because this felt different to me. Like, maybe it was just the sci-fi setting, but I think most of it was, like, um, I've never seen him so enigmatic with a movie. Like, just, like, ambiguous space that I just didn't know he would ever explore. Because, hmm. um, like, the end of it where... I don't remember what the line is they all say at the end. Um, it's, like, all the actors in the room with Willem Dafoe as the teacher, and they're like... One sec... What is the last line of Asteroid City? <laughs> <laughs> you can't wake up if you don't fall asleep. It's that line where they're all just like saying that like, oh, to the camera. Yeah. And I was just like, what the fuck is going on? Um, I don't usually yeah. have that feeling watching a Wes Anderson movie where I'm just like, not confused, but like, it just takes this weird esoteric approach to its subject that I, I really thought was cool. Yeah, uh, so I guess what I mean by do something different is like, I mean, entirely. Like, I mean, thematically, this one was, and maybe, like, tonally, kind of, like, from the sense of, like, what he wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, like, I want to see him direct someone else's script, or, like, you Mm -hmm. know, like, and maybe he can never get out of his pastel, like, square composition stuff, but, like, you know, write a... Do a horror movie, or, like, That's what I was about to say, I want Wes Anderson to do a horror movie so bad, he, like, said, he said a couple of times Rosemary's Baby is one of his favorite movies ever. I want to see Wes Anderson do something like that. Yeah, just, like, free yourself a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Like, and I, but I can also, like, I mean, I guess it's that literally an SNL skit. Was oh, Wes yeah. Anderson's horror movie, but, but like, just Edward Norton, like, walking down some stairs, and you're like, I'm afraid there's a body in the room. Or something like that. You know, I could just, I could just see it. Yeah. But, like, <clears throat> anyway, Wes, we love you. We love you so much. And Asteroid City... So far, my favorite movie of the year. But again, there are a couple I haven't seen that I'm like... Like, Zone of Interest, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be obsessed with. So, we'll see how that goes. Whenever I can watch it in Chicago. I don't know when it's coming out. Yeah, I mean, my list of things that I would probably really enjoy is probably even bigger than yours because I'm much worse at going to the movies. But I did <laughs> watch a lot of stuff on, like, streaming and, like, weirder things. Like, okay. I, like I, all year I felt like you were way ahead of me on 2023 releases. But I think we have almost... I have... 34 on my ranked list. I have 34. Yeah, okay. There you go. So, I saw the same, yeah. And, but like, just like different movies. But different stuff because <laughs> I was out here watching like the dumbest shit on, <laughs> on like Hulu and stuff. Um, so, my number 10, and I feel like I, I want to honorably mention um, VHS. 85, I think, is the one that came out this year. I watched all the... The, the VHS movies that are coming out on Shudder are fucking awesome. And, cool. like, they really revived that that franchise. And this one was not as good as the last year's, which was, I think, VHS 99. Mm-hmm. But it was really cool, and I'm always excited for those. Nice. Also, an honorable mention to the Please Don't Destroy movie, which you should check out. I didn't see that, yeah. I think, I think you might like it. Oh, yeah. It's on Peacock. Nice. Um. All right, number 10. Saw X. Socks. Socks. I wrote that this is probably the best Saw movie <laughs> since the original Saw. Nice. Like, one of the best, like, top three Saws, for sure. As somebody who's never seen them, I believe you. Yeah. This, I don't know if you would care about it if you just didn't watch any of the other ones or mm-hmm. not, but they they did something different, which is that <clears throat> the first act of the movie is just a drama. It's not even, like, and, like, a well done one because the previous Saw movies are all kind of tried to incorporate some like you know that kind of mid 2000s everything is green and sad yeah <laughs> vibe right. but but they they like you know brought a new tone into the Saw universe which I really appreciated and it was oh, yeah. just like well written and it was gory to the point of being satisfying as a movie in this franchise but it wasn't too bad whereas like Saw 2 through 5 are Ugh. <laughs> it get there are parts of your like I, I put on Saw three and didn't finish it because I was just like I'm too miserable for this. <laughs> um but Saw X was great and I and 
I also wrote at the end of my review of that, that like, seriously, we're done. I don't know how you can do any more of this. They will. They already announced it. They did. They announced Saw XI. Hmm. I'll be there. (laughs) Count me in. Number nine, I have bottoms. Hell yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, again, really funny, like, big, that one for me felt like a lot, there were some big swings. Yeah. For a comedy. For sure. Number eight, Thanksgiving. Nice. A blast. Really funny ass movie. Yeah. Like, and also like funny horror. Like, funny gore. Yeah, like, really creative in the kills where you're like, this is awful to watch, but, like, funny. Yeah, someone gets cooked like a turkey. That's true. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, number seven, I have Asteroid City. I think that if I watch it again, it will get better. It played so much better a yeah. second time. That's what solidified it as number one. The yeah. first time, I I was into it, but, like, second time, I was like, this is, this is it. Which is the case for a lot of his movies for me yeah um number six is blackberry and that's another one where i'm like i'm gonna watch that again and see it in a whole new light because after i saw that i was like what else has this guy done i watched his other movies and i went on a uh, and then i watched all of nirvana the band the show which was phenomenal and then i real i watched a ton of interviews with him and stuff and like i find him to be a fascinating person mm-hmm. and like a really interesting filmmaker and he has a lot of very intense opinions on, like, art and, like, how, like, things should be made and, like, how he's doing it. Okay. And I was, like, it, like really, like, inspired something in me. I was, like, man, this guy's talking to that, to my, like, ambitious side. Nice. You know, like, his first movies, um, The Dirties and Operation Avalanche, were both very, like, it, I watched them and I enjoyed them. And then I, li- I listened to his interviews and stuff talking about them. And he, like it blew my mind all the stuff I didn't realize about them, which is like Operation Avalanche is a found footage movie set in the sixties. Like basically the idea is that NASA did fake the moon landing. And so it's about, it's like a found footage documentary about the people who are faking the moon landing. And they like did a period piece found footage thing. Yeah. And they, they like went to NASA and they like, were like, Hey, we're film students and we just like want to look around. Can we? And then they shot scenes at (laughs) NASA without their knowledge. And they just like dressed up in suits and then like, and they got the schematics for the lunar lander and built their own and stuff. It's like, it was really cool. cool. So so I feel like if I go back and watch Blackberry, I'm going to be like even more into it. I think that's what my family is watching on Christmas Eve this year. So I'll be watching. watching. (laughs) My parents usually task me with like, Picking a movie from the past year that I think they'd like, and Blackberry, I think will be will play well. Nice, yeah. Um, and then number five, I have Oppenheimer. Yeah, I also felt like, oh man, I'm gonna. <laughs> I thought I thought Tenant was terrible. Yeah, we don't need to get into that. I thought and, it was fun. <laughs> and uh, and so <clears throat> Oppenheimer, I do think it's a little too long, like probably half an hour too long. But like, and yeah, the editing is weird. Yeah, that's my one big. Yeah, well. like the thing I noticed, and it's um, it's actually something that occurs in my number one movie of the year as well, is that there was music that at all times, yeah, like, and that was the way of like keeping the pace up as for a movie about people talking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I got so sick of it because yeah. I was like, it's exhausting. Yeah, I was yeah. like, especially yeah, the first like half an hour of Oppenheimer is like popping between all the different timelines and stuff and you're kind of yeah. like geez slow down <laughs> and then yeah the, but the middle of that movie where they're at los alamos is yeah fucking awesome. awesome yeah so like well done yep <laughs> <laughs> you got my seal of approval number four i have the holdovers i need to see that damn it's that's really like, okay, good that one i need to see really good that's we'll do that tonight i have nothing going on yeah check that it's out a landmark yeah um yeah great movie good christmas movie um, really funny. Um, if you like Alexander Payne's movies, which I do, it's like him. Usually his movies are really like sad and mm. sarcastic. And this is like pretty genuine, heartwarming little thing. Hell yeah. Sold me. Number three is I think one that's maybe in your bottom five. Oh. Which is Dungeons and Dragons. It's, it's one that's of your, not my bottom five, but it's not, it's not, it's not way up there. It's one that I had a good time, but not in the sense that like I'd watch it again. <laughs> Well, so but I remember you loving it when we saw yeah, it. Yeah, I was like, "Hell yeah, dude!" Like, I <laughs> it was the year of established IP things being good again. It was like hey, tell that to Marvel. I, well, I'm <laughs> I very 
distinctly avoided <laughs> Marvel. I <clears throat> I did watch Guardians of the Galaxy three, and we don't have to talk about it. Hmm. Um, but Super Mario Brothers was another one, not in my top ten, but like I was like, okay, it was, I like that. Yeah, one. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the Dungeons and Dragons movie, I was just like, maybe it's just the low expectations that led into it but i was also just like man it's cool that someone is actually out there writing just fun adventure movies fair i'll give you that and i was like really excited by that and i had a good time and i was like it didn't have to be a movie that was all like wink remember this from the game right it was like and like there at no point was anybody rolling a dice or something i felt like i was gonna get like you know inundated with that shit, which is what Ghostbusters is kind of did in Ghostbusters Afterlife, you know? Yeah, I, know. I don't think I saw it. Is that the one with Paul Rudd? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see And it's one. not bad, it's just like, I was like, you don't have to like, do this, you know? Yeah. You already got me to see the movie by calling it Ghostbusters, <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't have, you know? Um, and continuing that trend is Barbie, was my number two. Barbie was, is like right on the edge of being in my top ten. I rewatched it two nights ago. Yeah. And I didn't like it as much as the first time in theaters, it just being like so much. Not that I had like low expectations. I mean, I, I had like pretty high expectations and it met them. Yeah. Um, you talk about Barbie. It I, was. I just watched that. I like yeah, it. Yeah. I think it may not hold up on repeat viewings because of just the, you know, the time and the place. Yes. You know? And I feel like it was such an event and it was so. Because we all like. <laughs> we all like we're like anticipating it but we're like what is this gonna be right they did a good job of kind of keeping it hush hush what the bit was i guess and then he watched it and it like invented a new culture you yeah know? it like re it like redefined everything and it was it was very important to a lot of people but for yes. me it's just like a person going to see a movie um i guess a man <laughs> <laughs> like um as a man going to see a movie about barbie i was like this is fucking cool this is yeah. fun movie I thought it had a lot of, like, punk sentiments in it. Like, mm-hmm. I thought it was, like, pretty surprisingly, like, you know, anti-capitalist and it even included the Mattel executives as characters and, like, the fact yeah. that that, like, got through. So, we get... I, I have a thing to say about that. Because I... That's actually one of my complaints about the movie is, like, the the way Mattel... Because they did approve it, obviously. Yeah. There's, like, this kind of feel feel for me, even with Warner Brothers, with, like, the Zack Snyder joke and stuff, where it's, like, on their part being, like, we're corporations, but, like, we're still cool and relatable. That kind of bothered me a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> that, like, I don't know. The, the, like, the jokes weren't, like, uh, sharp-toothed enough to where I was, like... That's I don't fair. know. I, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, that it felt like they were trying to, like, excuse it, almost. Yeah. Well, that's fair. We'll see. We'll yeah. see how that how that grows yeah it, on did, me. it didn't bother me as much the second time because I knew it was gonna happen but the first time that was like my one complaint but like good soundtrack like yeah. the production is unfathomable to me mm-hmm. like how and I watched this interview with uh, the actors on actors thing with Margot Robbie and with uh, Killian Murphy yeah and it was I was like groaning because it was like Margot Robbie was like yeah you know we just like. It was just a dance party on set all the time. We were just having so much fun. Is that fun. a local band? People would go and <laughs> hang out just to hang out. And I'm just like, this is... Yeah, I'm sure for the <laughs> above-the-line people making a <laughs> shitload of money, it was very fun. Right. Yeah, but I was just like, that movie clearly had, like, armies of people right. building shit. And, like, you know, I'm like, I don't know. Making, a like, a worldwide shortage of pink paint or whatever. Is that real? <laughs> I thought it was. Uh, <laughs> I heard something about that. That's a fun hyperbole if it's not. Um, Barbie production exacerbated a company's pink paint depletion. Yeah, de- it depleted the global reserves of its supplier, Roscoe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, just dance party every day. People weren't even on call and were just coming in to hang out and have fun. And <laughs> and I was like, just like, that's that's very unaware. I was like... <laughs> And I could tell that, like, film students were going to be watching that and being like, oh, man, my set's going to be like that, and mm. it's going to implode, and... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's super fair. <laughs> but anyway, great movie. Yeah, Barbie's uh, awesome, yeah. Uh, and my number one, which I, <laughs> I very specifically remember you coming over after seeing it to my apartment. I don't know if it was maybe when... When we or no maybe not directly after maybe it was the next day. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I know where you're going with this. Yeah, and you were and I was like, how did you did you like the movie? And you were like, I didn't love it. I think is what you said. <laughs> that is exactly how I felt about it. Um, which is Killers of the Flower Moon, 
which, like I said about Oppenheimer, music was, like, their main tool of keeping yeah. it paced well. But I will say, like, I was just... A, I didn't know anything about the story, and I was just, like, fascinated by it. I thought it was really weird. It's just, like, yeah. this really bizarrely unknown piece of American history. Um, but then that sneaky Marty, he found... He just put Goodfellas <laughs> into, <laughs> into this movie. Like, it just becomes, like, Goodfellas. It's just people getting fucking knocked off. Yeah. Like, it was awesome. <laughs> I was like, this fucking rules. And also, like, I could very, like... I think it was very intelligently directed and intense. Yeah. Um, and, and the performances are amazing. And it was just such a complete movie for me. It was very, very cool. I was just, like, so sucked in and loved it. And for a movie oh, yeah. that's as long as that is... Right. I was like, I'm really surprised that I am still connecting with this because yeah. it was it was a lot. Here, my, my thing, and this is so dumb, and I acknowledge it's so dumb. I wish I hadn't have known Jack White was gonna be in it because <laughs> I kept I was like, oh, when's Jack White gonna show up? The very last fucking scene. Yeah. And I was just like, <laughs> oh my god. So not that that like ruined my viewing of it by any stretch of the imagination but it definitely was distracting for me that i kept saying where's jack white well i i really didn't know anything you told me about this jack white issue you had yeah. so i also was like where's jack white gonna pop up but i but it it didn't i also didn't know that fucking jason isbell and yeah, well, simpson are like ma like major yeah, characters awesome. i yeah. love them clearly martin scorsese was just listening to some country music and he's like you know what we should put some of these guys in this <laughs> picture I love Sturgill Simpson. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, so that was fun. Yeah. Um, check it out. Check. Go check it out. Um, <laughs> Why don't you go check it out. Go check it out. We could just very quickly talk about bad movies. Uh, yeah, I mean, my bad movies. Actually, my bottom three are all Disney, so I don't feel that bad <laughs> like knocking them. And they were Quantum Mania, the new Indiana Jones, and then Peter Pan and Wendy. I didn't even know that existed. No one did. I saw it. Which is a bummer, because <laughs> it was um, David Lowry, who did The Green Knight, directed it. And I like The Green oh. Knight, so I was kind of excited about it. And he did Ghost Story and... Um, what was the other one? Pete's Dragon. So he did this is the second Disney movie. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't bad. I just I just thought it was kind of boring. Like I really don't have any specific like qualm with it. Yeah. But the new Indiana Jones and new Quantum Mania, like... Or new Quantum Mania, Quantum Mania, like... Just like felt so abysmal. I was so sad watching those movies. <laughs> yeah, because I Indiana Jones and Marvel are two worlds that I'm like very invested in, and just like both dropped the ball so hard by just doing the exact same thing they've done a million times but worse. That sounds right. Yeah, yeah. I would have no fucking clue what's going on if I tried to watch Quantum Mania. No, you wouldn't. I yeah. I tried to. I watched. I watched Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and Doctor Strange 2, mm -hmm. and I had no fucking clue what was happening. Hell yeah. And I, I saw Endgame <laughs> and anything that's taken place after that, I, I'm i lost. Yeah. Yeah, so... A lot of TV shows. Yeah, that's yeah. not fair. <laughs> it is if you're me and watch all of them, yeah. oh. which I'm still not thrilled about, but I can't stop now. Yeah. I, <laughs> I My bottom three... You know what? I, I have Bo is Afraid as my bottom, my last one. Yeah. But I am actually going to revise this opinion. Thank you. Um, I think the first hour of Bo is Afraid was perfectly good. Mm -hmm. It was a weird Kafka, you know. Yeah, it definitely gets weaker as it goes. Like, I'll give you that. crazy thing. And I was like, I was like, okay, that's cool. And then, like, in the second half, the second part, I... It goes. It's like a seven act movie or something, right? What? When, how are you dividing the parts up? Well, so the first hour, I'm just imagining him in the city in his like apartment and like yeah. you know being chased around by that mob or whatever, right? And then I, then he kind of wakes up in Nathan Lane's house, yeah. And that part's pretty funny. I like that part. Yeah. Um, everything after that, I was like just so frustrated. <laughs> I was like, what? Like it was, and then especially by the last like half hour where we're doing like the trial and all that stuff. I was oh, like, I was into the trial. I, was I don't like, even care. I, I was so checked out. I was just like, <laughs> you want to talk about sniffing a fart? That's, that's, <laughs> that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that movie. That movie is a big <laughs> fart sniff. I mean, it was just to me like, so informed by the idea of like, the auteur director and like, his, 
him exercising his demons on screen and yeah. like and I was just like it got to the point where I was just like <sighs> it felt more like it was for Ari Aster and not for me <laughs> as the audience. See, I'm fine with that. I don't know. It doesn't bother me. It and also it's just like there were there were parts where I was just like I don't I feel like it should have ended there. There was a there's like an extended sequence where everything is like animated. Yeah, he's, and I, he's like uh, it's like the play, but he's inside the play. And yeah, it's, yeah. I thought the movie was gonna end, but there was a full like another hour. Oh yeah, there were two like two more acts after that. Yeah, and then then <laughs> when he has sex with Parker Posey again, thought the movie it was gonna end. Should have ended. Should have ended there. Yeah, and then they kept going, and I was just like stuff like that. Um, but I'm not gonna say that's the worst movie. Uh, I'm gonna give that to Skin Marink because that movie pissed me off. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh my god! And that's a movie that has going that's gone down as I think one of the most polarizing releases of this year. Yeah. Fuck off! I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's like I get again. I understand why it would be appealing, but like in like a theoretical sense, mm-hmm. it's just this very slow quiet like it's it it is found footage coded but it's like basically just imagine like all the shots are off subject Mm -hmm. so it's like the corner of the room you know like i'm saying like literally like where the wall meets the ceiling and like the sound design is like what's doing the work or yes okay and it's like two children who wake up in the middle of the night after having a nightmare and they're kind of like bumbling around their house in the middle of the night Mm -hmm. and it's just lots of sounds but nothing happens Mm -hmm. like it's like the like they're going for minimal like minimalist horror where it's like you just the anticipation and the atmosphere is supposed to do it but it was so like there was no payoffs Mm -hmm. so it was just like a bore and and it just like that for me was like such a wasted potential in a way that made me mad (laughs) and i It also is just so indebted to David Lynch's work. Like, in the sense of, like, you know how, like, David Lynch would just shoot, like, a ceiling fan? Yeah. And, like, that would be scary. It's like they took that idea and they stretched it out over to a whole movie. Uh, And it just didn't work. Gotcha. So that was a bummer. Also, Cocaine Bear. That movie was boring and dumb and not funny. I was fine with it. I, I I don't have strong feelings. I was fine with that movie. But I do have strong feelings about Christmas Vacation. Welcome. <laughs> that went way 40 longer. minutes. <laughs> I went way longer than, I, than we anticipated. Um, Dan, tell us about your history with Christmas Vacation. Because you have more of a like connection to it than I do. And I think that's fun. This movie is just like, you know, in the oeuvre of my family. Like, if this is on television, which it frequently is yeah. in, uh, in the Christmas season, it's on the TV... It's just one of those, like, Chevy Chase and, like, you know, comes from, I think, one of the more uh, informative com- comedy circles for my my father's sense of humor, mm-hmm. which is, like, Chevy Chase, Steve Martin, Blues Brothers, like, yeah. kind of stuff. Like, or 70s SNL, SNL. Yeah. Where it's dry and, like, verbose. And very sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, dry, yeah. sarcastic, and, like... I say verbose, but, like, it's just, like, using words, you know? Like, can I get anything for you? Drive you out from the middle of nowhere and leave you for dead? Like, it's, like, it's <laughs> so, like, like the, it's word-heavy. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I, I, I was reading that. Yeah, and I feel like that just, like, informed my sense of humor, too, through yeah. my father. And so this movie, and also, like, just watching it now, now that I'm older, because, like, I didn't really realize that I, like, loved it as a movie until mm-hmm. maybe, like, a few years ago. Because I think it does a, it's like a really well edited movie to me. Like I think the comedy is really well cut. Yeah. And the older I get, the more I. It's like the you you are a Bart Simpson until you turn into a Homer. It's like I you like I I feel like I relate to Clark Griswold more and more as I get older. Where you're like. He's just trying to make it all work. Yeah. You know? And it's just, like, the world against you. But he's also still, like, an asshole. Like... <laughs> I will say this. I So I also watched the original Vacation. <clears throat> and, I love the original one a lot. Yeah. And then I watched European Vacation, which I had never seen. Oh. Um, in prep. And I would say that Vacation... I think he in the original vacation he is way more of an asshole. Yes, and I think that's why I like that one is they doubled down on it. Uh, whereas <laughs> it sucks so much. like it's about a man being driven insane 
Yeah. Like, and it's not, I like, love that. I feel like in that movie, it's like, he does, like, the kids are annoying, mm-hmm. and it's like, you know, he is not as kind-hearted. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I mean, this one's a Christmas movie, which also I think they, it, the tone feels more Christmas movie. For that yeah, and, and it's like, it has a lot of very genuinely, like, heartfelt sentiments in this yeah. film. Like, I will say, and this kind of, you know, leans back, bleeds back into my personal history at, with it. So, like, maybe 2007 or 8, my brother um, took on a very uh, interesting project, which is to start scanning all of our family photos for, like, that, that we have. Mm-hmm. Going through, like, and, and then he started putting together a Christmas video. So instead of, like, literally looking through a photo book, he starts in, you know, whenever we have the earliest Christmas photos mm-hmm. from our our extended family, which is probably like in the fifties or something. Um, and he, uh, scanned these photos in, they kind of like come in and out and it's like looking through a photo book of Christmas memories. That's sweet. Yeah. And, um, one year he added in the scene from this movie where he goes up into the attic (laughs) and gets locked in there. And he, uh, (laughs) and it's basically, he superimposed old film footage that we have from our family onto the projector. That's cool. So that it's Carl Carl Griswold watching our family's history. And that's how the movie would start. And then it would go through all the photos and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, when I, we watched this, I was like, that scene is so genuine. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, it's kind of, you know, like again, it, it proves to you like how much he is like invested in giving to his family. Yeah. And I feel like in this movie, it's like the kids are not annoying so much as they are like passive and he's kind of yeah. like angsty and he's kind of like, he's like, ah, we're going to have a good old fashioned Christmas. And he's like, until he's driven insane ultimately again. Right. But like, I think well, it's more Eddie who's driven insane. Not actually. He's already there. He's already there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah now he kidnaps again. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Eddie, ha- <laughs> Eddie doesn't really have an arc. <laughs> yeah. He just, he just goes to kidnapping. Yeah. But like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I, I really think this one adds another layer to this comedic formula mm-hmm. because European vacation just does the exact same movie. Mm-hmm. And so this is, this is like, it does hit a lot of pretty similar beats, but I think that because it's this John Hughes written thing, mm-hmm. that it has actually a much more tender kind of element to it that I think is, makes it a more complex and yeah. interesting movie. I like that, yeah. So there's, you know, that that's what's happening for me here. I love that. But yeah, like, I don't know, growing up, it's the the term Griswold, like, there was a house at the end of our street in our neighborhood that would go, like, all out on their lights and stuff. We, I don't know what those people's actual names was. We just knew them as the Griswolds. Nice. We just called them the Griswolds. Awesome. Or, like, um, you know, just, like, I don't know, there are so many lines from this movie that have just become, you know, Stuart family, like, vernacular. Yeah. Um... I like I dropped this one on my mom um, when I was home for Thanksgiving. Um, we were talking about like getting you know getting dinner or whatever, and we we're like, well, and my dad was going to some meeting or something, so he, he wasn't gonna have dinner with us. But and uh, we we're like, we gotta go, we gotta hurry up, I gotta I gotta eat so I can take my back pill. And I feel like that, <laughs> like just like that, <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um, you know that I. I I think Clark Griswold is one of the all-time great comedic characters. Yeah. I, I think he plays it so well, and the, I don't know, just, like, the dry, passive performance. And, like, obviously we, you know, know now that Chevy Chase is just actually an asshole. Right. But, like, he was he was a kind of underrated talent, I think. He even tried to break into more dramatic stuff. Not, yeah. Not unlike Bill Murray, you know, like, and Bill Murray did succeed in becoming a dramatic actor, but, yes. but like, I think they have a similar aura of like, kind of a low key asshole, a smarmy, thing smarmy, and... yeah, and I just love that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like Bill Murray in Ghostbusters is I would is like, just to cut above, like Clark Griswold, but I just love those characters, yeah, yeah, for better or worse, <laughs> for better or worse, I think it's for better. You're good, yeah, yeah. I I kind of forgot how much 
just bonkers he is in vacation than this. I haven't seen vacation in a while, but I remember liking that one more just in general, but I think it's because the ending's so just over the top and dark. Yeah. <laughs> but this definitely ends on like a happy note, which I is nice. I mean it's a Christmas movie it shows. Yeah. It's a family movie. I mean, well, it's a family movie that has a lot of like not family appropriate stuff. I totally forgot about rewatching yeah. it this time. <laughs> The scene where he's at the underwear counter with the yeah, with the one of the most lady. uncomfortable scenes I've ever watched in my <laughs> life, and I wrote that down. I was like, "Oh my god!" It is. I mean, but it is so well done. I was yeah, like, it's "Perfect." <laughs> like the like in any other movie, like that stops after like one line. Like he mm-hmm. says, like um, it's a bit nip, nippy, nipply. I mean, nippy or you know, whatever you know, and like yeah. that's that's the bit. Yeah, but it just goes Doubles down, yeah. <laughs> like triples, quadruples down on it. Yeah, I I mean. As a devoted fan of Curb Your Enthusiasm, the cringier the better when it comes to just watching something and being uncomfortable and not having any other option but to laugh at it. And this yeah. movie's pretty good at I mean, Chevy Chase is just good at that, I think. Yeah. He's, he, he's like, especially like I've seen this on TV probably more times than I've seen the un, you know, unedited version, but like yeah. I love the, like the few times that he does curse are so yeah. good. Yeah. Like, um, he, he goes, he's like, um, he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not married or whatever. And she goes, well, Mary's my name. And he goes, no shit. Like, like there's, that's just good. That's really good. I was just looking at something for my wife. God rest her soul. Oh God, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no, she's not dead. Yet. We're just divorced. She's history. And obviously she doesn't wear underwear. And there are plenty of shopping days left until adulteries, adulthood, which is to say Christmas as a mule, mule log. Not a log. I don't have a log, but I mean, you know, just, if I had a log, not in the sense that you think I said I did. <laughs> oh, good golly. Tis the season to be merry. Well, that's my name. Oh, shit. A well-placed swear is so important. Yeah. For comedy effect. For comedic effect. He says fuck one time. He does, and I wish I had written down when. All I wrote is that that was a great F-bomb, and I didn't write down the context, and I can't remember now. Because this is PG-13 as opposed to the rated R original. Right. Which was probably a smart move as far as Christmas movies go. Let's look. Um, Hap, hap, happiest Christmas since Bing Crosby tapped Dan- with, with Danny, Danny fucking, fucking K. K. Yeah, that's it. So good. That's good. Uh, yeah. And then and then the uh, underwear counter woman appears in his backyard in a fantasy sequence. Yeah. Um, this was always such a bizarre scene to me as a young person i was just like what's going on here mm-hmm. but like this is <laughs> like i don't know it, i don't know if this movie needed this scene i not really like it doesn't make any sense but... also basically just doing the like fast times thing like it's already been done in a movie yeah yeah i, I think it is a big fast times reference because she comes out of the pool the same way that phoebe Cates yeah. kind of comes out of the pool um the, the difference is he's movie. not masturbating <laughs> which is good yeah <laughs> for um, a christmas film probably good for a family christmas film one thing and I'll just preface this by saying Randy Quaid, we know, is not, like, a good dude. Yeah. All the weird Trump election conspiracy stuff aside, I love him in this movie. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like, I don't know why he doesn't bother me in this one like he does any other time I think I've seen him in anything. I don't know if it's, like, just, like, Clark is the foil to him. Like, yeah. me, the audience surrogate, just, like, acknowledging how ridiculous it is. But yeah, I really like Randy Quaid in this. Yeah, he's, he's, he's amazing. <laughs> Uh, the line that really got me was, they had to replace my metal plate with a plastic one. Every time Catherine would rub up the microwave, I'd wet my pants and forget who I was for half an hour. <laughs> I laughed. That was probably the most I laughed the entire movie. Yeah. <laughs> was that line. I just completely forgot about it. And I was like, that's that's so good. The 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 jokes are good because they're not all like really obvious ones. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like Jelly of the Month Club. Mm-hmm. Like, that's another one that just feels like my parents are always saying as <laughs> some some kind of reference. There's a lot of interesting casting in this movie, mm-hmm. uh, off the Randy Quaid bit. Um, so first of all, as far as the Vacation franchise goes, uh, again, I watched this a lot growing up, and I didn't discover the fact that there were other Vacation movies until later. I yeah. like I didn't know that this was a sequel. Right. Yeah, for a long time. I think my I don't remember if I saw this or the original Vacation first, but I remember watching the original on when it was on TV with my dad. So it was like, you know, a TV cleaned up version a little bit, but I thought it was the funniest thing ever. And then I think I always knew about both of those two, at least European vacation was later. Um, each of the vacation movies has different children cast. Oh, all of them do? Yes. Oh, I thought it was, oh, okay. 
Uh, every wow. single one has different children. Wow. Yeah. Um, oh, which I think it might actually be kind of a secretly genius bit. Where it's almost like it kind of doesn't matter, <laughs> like, 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 like the concept of like him like trying to provide for his kids no matter what, but they're d- d- indistinguishable. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is the 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 children in this movie are Johnny Galecki and Juliette Lewis, who are probably the most successful of any of the children as far as their careers go. Um, Johnny Galecki of Big Bang Theory fame. Oh, yep, he plays. Uh, the one who wears glasses. I've never seen. Um, I have watched like one episode, and I would not have connected that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know who this is. I never would have connected that in a million years. Yep. That is wild. Yep. Okay. Eddie and Catherine are all the same actors. Yeah. Um. I love that. I've been rewatching Thirty Rock, and I love that Jane Krakowski was Eddie's daughter in um the original Vacation. Yeah, I noticed really that happy. too. I, was... I wish that I wish there was an appearance here, but it's fine. Um. They're all they're all directed by different directors. Um, mm. Vegas Vacation is directed by Stephen Kessler. Ah, I haven't Ooh. seen that one. Um, Gotta I'm go s- support my folks, I guess. Well, that came out in like '97 or something, so it's like way after this one. Oh, yeah. I didn't. Know, I yeah, I never saw that one. This was directed by Jeremiah Chechik. It's his first feature. Also directed the movie The Avengers. Not mm, not the not, not the, the one, Avengers. Not the one that anyone cares about. <laughs> Written by John Hughes, and of course it's a Chicago movie. Yeah, I I don't know the last time I saw this. I never connected it was a Chicago movie as a kid. Yeah. I guess because I just didn't really have much of a connection to Chicago at the time. I don't know the last time I saw this movie, but I was like, oh, I t- never clocked that. Well, maybe one reason was that it was uh, mostly shot in Colorado. <laughs> oh. Um, and the, all the house stuff is shot in Burbank, California. Well, There are like a couple exteriors of like the loop. Like yeah. when he goes shopping. Right. And that's it. Okay. Um, when you watch the original Vacation, there's like the first like scene when they leave is is like they're on to drive on Lakeshore and hmm. stuff. So there's more Chicago in the first movie. But Yeah. No, I never connected that. And I am kind of embarrassed because he's wearing a lot of like bears and like Blackhawk stuff throughout the movie. And I just yeah. never noticed it as a kid. I've resolved that I want the bears hat. That's a cool hat. It's a great hat. I, I thought that if I cared about the bears, but that is a good hat. More cast stuff. So all of the parents um, are like pretty lifelong established actors. Uh, so Clark's mom is played by Diane Ladd, who is Laura Dern's mother. Oh. Um, she was also in Chinatown and Wild at Heart. Cool. Uh, John Randolph plays Clark's dad. He was uh, an old Hollywood actor um, who was blacklisted. And then returned like Red Scare yeah. style. Wow. Um, and then returned to movies in 1966. And he's just got like a ton of like supporting acting credits. Gotcha. Um, Art, who is um, oh um, Beverly D'Angelo's yeah mo- dad, um, was in Twelve Angry Men. <laughs> oh yeah, um, 50s, bunch of 50s and 60s movies. And then Doris Roberts plays Frances, and she just looks really familiar. And I don't know exactly what I know her from, but. Just a ton of 60s and 70s movies. Nice. And then another, more fun casting, The Neighbors. Yeah. Which is, like, one of the best parts of this movie. Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, pre-Seinfeld. Yeah. As Margot. Awesome. And I discovered this, this on this rewatch, was Todd is played by Nicholas Guest, brother of... Christopher Guest? Correct. Oh, I love that Isn't man. that interesting? That is interesting. Um, I didn't know that. I don't know, Margo, is one of my favorite lines. <laughs> They're hilarious. In how? this, like, weirdly, like, super 80s couple. <laughs> yeah. I'm mean, looking up how old Julia, Julia Louis Dreyfus, I have a hard time saying that name, was in this then. Like, pre Seinfeld. 28, okay. Another note I have about the original vacation is that there's the scene where they're in East St. Louis, quote that unquote. That scene is wild. It's, Roll them up. It doesn't look like East St. Louis no, at all. No, it looks it like doesn't. it's New York. Yeah. Which is so funny to me. Also, like, I don't know what East St. Louis looked like in the 70s, but I'm pretty sure it's not like that. And There's no way. And, like, when I think of East St. Louis now, I just think about Pops. Like, it's just, like, you know, it's just Pops in that strip club next to it in the middle of, like, an apocalyptic war zone where it's just, like, everything is just barren. There's nothing out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I took a wrong turn on the way to prom one year because our prom was always, like, downtown St. Louis and, like... Started headed east a little bit, and I was like, hmm. Yep. That's how they get you. You always end up accidentally going to East St. Louis yeah. by taking a wrong turn. Right. Yeah. That's happened to me a couple times. 
Um, a note I had is Angelo Badalamenti doing the music for this. Yep. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> Frequent David Lynch collaborator. And a uh, banger theme song by Mavis Staples. Yeah. Well, the first note I have is, whatever happened to animated opening title sequences and original songs for movies? Yeah. Two very fun things that I love every time a movie has them. This is the only vacation movie that ha- that doesn't have Holiday Road in it. Aww. And the funny thing is, like, I Holiday Road gets real annoying to mm-hmm. me. I'm not a, not a fan of that song, but it's like a nice nostalgic thing to have there. I didn't even notice they didn't use it in this one. Yep. This is the only one where they're, like, not actually on vacation. So. I, that, that was something I was thinking about, too. The name's a little, like... I guess he's, like, maybe off of work, which yeah. could be vacation. They don't go anywhere. Yeah, it's Christmas break. Yeah, it's Christmas yeah. break. National Lampoon's Christmas break. Big miss on their part. Clark's monologue at the end. I don't know if you know anything about whether that's improvised or written or, like, the process behind him just rattling off that much wild dialogue so fast and convincingly. Yeah. I was so impressed by that. That's an amazing monologue, and it's like it's also crazy because he doesn't really curse. Like no. I think at the very the very end, end, I think he, like, he says "Hallelujah, it. holy shit!" Where's the Tylenol? Yeah, yeah. But like he doesn't really curse. He says no. like "bug eyed," you know. Yeah, it's like, like the most specific weird insults. Yeah, it was rumored yeah. that his rant was ad libbed. This is somewhat true. Cast members not on screen who were facing Chevy had a sign hanging around their necks that had one word written on them. And some of those were adjectives adjectives he uses. Hmm. That's a really weird way to do that. That is a weird way to do that. Chris Columbus was supposed to direct this movie. Oh. Apparently. A fre- frequent Harry- John Hughes collaborator. Yeah, Harry Potter director, right? But did not want to work with Chevy Chase. <laughs> ah, there you go. Eggnog is almost gone. That was not bad. It, wasn't it, a- it grew on me the more we drank it, but at first I was not convinced of the yeah. eggnog. It was just boozy milk, and it wasn't yeah. even like <laughs> it wasn't even like boozy. It was just like cinnamon milk. Yeah, it was just like yeah, yeah. It just tastes like I was drinking like melted ice cream, a little cinnamon. Yeah, I was which was it. fine. More, more and more dairy based drinks on this show lately. Mm-hmm. I'll have to pour some milk in the next episode. I guess I won't spoil what it is, but I gotta think of a cocktail for for that. I have nothing else. <laughs> and I, I, I love how connected you are to this movie because like I just don't have that strong a uh, bond to it. I get like, yeah. it, was, it was always a movie that was just like kind of on, but I never yeah. fully like paid attention to until rewatching it for this. I was like, oh, this is solid. Yeah, like it's just always kind of on in the background at different Christmas things. Yeah, and it's like that now. It's just like I just never. It's just like I had a revelation at some point that it was just such a such a reference point for so many things in my life. Yeah. Like, um, you know, just like almost like every single line of this has been repeated in the Stewart household somehow. Amazing. And I feel like it, as I get older, like I can, I, I not only recognize that it's like a really well-made movie, there's like all kinds of good gags and, um, Chevy does like good, some good physical comedy, does good, like awkward stuff. Like it's, and, um, yeah, love it. My favorite Christmas movie. Any other, do you have any other favorite Christmas like or actual holiday Christmas films? movies? Oh, not really. I never was that into Elf, which I feel like is one that a lot of people yeah. like around our age will kind of cling to. I think as a society, we've got to take a few years off of Elf. Just take a break. Like, Just it, take it can come a break. Back. It can come back. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> like, that's another, like, when Elf came out, it was like one of those ones where the whole family, like, we... We didn't see it in theaters or anything. It was just like we got the DVD and we watched it together. Yeah. And it was like, holy shit, this is hilarious. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had a teacher in high school who during December, it was my journalism teacher. So it was like his room was kind of like the hangout. So it was Mm -hmm. like, you know, if we were done in another class, we'd go hang out down there or, you know, be working before and after school. Yeah. He would have the movie Elf running on repeat on, on his TV, like before and after school. And I was just like, we don't need to do this. No. And then it became abs- absorbed into, like, marketing for shit. And, yeah. like, it's memed and it just became too much. And yeah, not a bad movie, but no. we can just... Yeah, I like I like, I like your hit pause. Hit yeah. pause, take a break. Blonde Zoe Deschanel will be there when we get back. <laughs> she will always be there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I really like... I mean, the Christmas movies that I like are the 
bad ones. <laughs> um, Christmas with the Cranks is so I still bad. Seen it. You've, yeah. Um, and it's like uh, that's another one. My family watched it together, and I don't. And like we're the only people on the face of the earth that seem to get derived joy from, from it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like really, there's some pretty funny shit in there. Obviously, Tim Allen is an asshole, also. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, uh, Jingle All the Way. I like Jingle. Okay, I've seen that one a couple times. Yeah, yeah. that's a bad movie, but I certainly enjoy it. There's yeah. there's exactly one line in there that is like S tier comedy, which is when. Um, at the end when they're in the parade mm-hmm. and uh, Sinbad is... Sinbad is unhinged in that movie and it's awesome. Uh, Sinbad is like running through the parade at, dressed as the bad guy trying to catch up with Arnold. Yeah. And he, there's a there's a person dressed as a present and he goes, out of my way, box! And he just <laughs> pushes him <laughs> to the ground. It's amazing. That's... Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of it. Black Christmas, the original... Black Christmas is awesome. Christmas horror movie. Yeah, I like that one a lot. I just, what, I rewatched that last year, I think. We watched it together with the we big group. We did it, Anna's, yeah. yeah. Okay, we did, yeah. I would say, I think that was a group thing. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't have, like, big feelings about It's a Wonderful Life. I've never seen it. Um, It's pretty good. I, I like, know what it's, I know what it is. It sounds like it'd be heartwarming enough. I just have very little interest in watching it. It's kind of like... <laughs> It's, it is, the, 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 you know how it goes. Like, yeah, like, I know what happens in it, yeah. And it's like, the part where he's like, finally realizing how he needs to be alive. Yeah. You know, and he's like, it takes like 20 minutes of him like running from person to person going, hey, don't you remember me? And then they're like, good. yeah, they're like, um, no. And he's like, well, oh, Clark, I know you. We went to school together. And it takes like way too long. He he has that interaction like five <laughs> How long is times. That movie? It's like two and a half hours. Oh. It's like an epic. Oh, I have no interest in that. Because there's a lot of stuff before he even gets to the angel oh. part. I just assumed it's it was just setting stuff up. Okay. I will say like I, the beginning of the movie is pretty great. There's like the I don't know, throw a, throw a rope around the moon, pull it down. That whole thing that's pretty great. Okay. Um, but uh, I don't know that. that you don't know that scene. It's like <laughs> no. it's we it's it's good. Okay, <laughs> I'll probably watch. Like, I'm sure my parents will listen to this and hear me say I haven't seen It's a Wonderful Life and be like, "How do we never like make you watch that?" Just, we, it was on at Thanksgiving, like when I went I back just, home for Thanksgiving, and I yeah. was like, "Okay." I feel like I've seen like parts of it, but I've, I've never like I've never watched that movie. The, it, there's a part of it in this movie in Christmas oh, yeah. Vacation when Rusty's on the couch and yeah. they ring the doorbell and everybody shows up. Yeah. Um, so I've seen that scene. Yeah, you've seen the every time a bell rings, rings. angel yeah, gets wings. I know, I know that line. Yeah, classic. Yeah. Um, oh, and Scrooged. I love Scrooged. It's, yeah, I haven't seen Scrooge. Oh man, that's like you, you talked about doing that one for this episode. Yeah, we yeah. also we considered that, but yeah. um, yeah, watch Scrooge. I think it's more, it's in your wheelhouse. Like okay. as far as like, yeah, like the the opening act of Scrooge has some shit you would love. It's Frank Oz directed it. He says Richard Donner. Oh, well, Frank Oz is in it <laughs> at okay. one point. He might have helped write it or something. I don't know. Richard Donner did Superman. Superman. Oh, and Lethal Weapon. And Goonies. And The Omen. Wow. Yep. But not Lethal Weapon 5 through 7. 5 through 7? It's from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, um, the, the, episodes, the, the episodes you can't watch on streaming anymore because they're offensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So thanks for joining us on our Lethal Weapon episode. <laughs> our Eyes Wide Shut Lethal Weapon. Best uh, movies of the year. Best movies of the year. Christmas Vacation Extravaganza. Yep. Hey, what's coming up for us? <laughs> are, are we plugging stuff? We could. I guess we can. I actually don't have any shows announced. I have shows coming up, but they're not announced yet. I don't. Have well, any... this is a secret. This is a se- place to secretly announce things. Do you remember you secretly announced Two oh, Winner yeah, Two Tape? Two Winner Two Tape, which, yeah. I'll just say this. You should keep January 26th open. <laughs> Not because of any shows. Not because of any shows. Just keep it open. You never know. Um, my band is playing a show that hasn't been announced, but I'll just go ahead and tell you right now because it's just not enough time to market it regardless. <laughs> um, January 6th. Of course, we will be celebrating the anniversary of the insurrection. <laughs> um, just kidding. Um <laughs> Just kidding. Just it's Josh and um, Beat Kitchen, January sixth. Come see Damager, Super Kick, Shotgun Funeral, Super Corp, and Authentic Pines. 
play some rock and roll music. Hell yeah. All right. I will be there. All right. Happy holidays, folks. Happy holidays. We'll see you in 2024. Jesus Christ. That's so. That's like in two weeks. That's in a few weeks from now. Uh. Okay, I'm cut. <laughs> <laughs>